what you have to realize is that uh, with the agreement as it's, as, as it's going to be uh, hopefully implemented in, uh, in the near future, um, there is going to be very strong incentives for countries to keep offering low tax rates, tax rates even lower than 15%, to attract activity on their territory. It's true that today there's no uh, a country where a lot of, there is a lot of substance, meaning there's a lot of production uh, happening with a 0% tax rate, but we might well go there. Today we have countries where there's a you know, substantial production happening with rates uh, that are below 10%. Uh, especially, you know, tax rates for income derived from intellectual property with all patent boxes. You know, it's very common to have rates that are five, six, seven percent. That's the situation today, and we might even get to to less than that uh, in the future, because the agreement doesn't put a floor to to tax rates, uh, to how low tax rates can go when firms have real activity. Mm. And so I'm really concerned about that. And the reason why I'm concerned more broadly is that you have to take, you know, the, a bigger perspective on tax systems. The corporate tax is one tax, but, you know, it's not the main source of tax revenues, at least in, in most countries. However, the reason why it matters a lot is uh, because it's essentially impossible to have a progressive individual income tax which is in most countries the pillar you know, of tax progressivity, the way we attempt to tax high earners. It's impossible to have a well-functioning individual income tax without a well-functioning and high enough corporate tax. Because if, if, the corporate tax is, uh, if the corporate tax rate is too low, then what happens is that rich people incorporate. They mm -hmm. operate as businesses, they earn income you know, subject to the corporate income, the low corporate income tax rate, and uh, the individual income tax uh, unravels. Mm. And so if we want to do anything seriously to uh, curb the rise of income and wealth inequality, it's going to involve progressive taxation, progressive taxation of income in particular, and that needs to uh, uh, involve substantially higher corporate income tax rates. I don't see a future where corporate tax rates remain, you know, uh, 15 percent or even less than that, and we can really tax uh, high income earners uh, at substantially higher rates, I, mm. I think. Uh, and, and so the risk at the end of the day is just mm. to see a continuation of the rise of, of mm. income and wealth inequality that yeah. we've witnessed in recent decades. There's an important point here though. I mean, what we're trying to address with the global tax deal uh, is tax evasion that is facilitated by shifting from country to country. Mm -hmm. I mean, the issues that uh, you raise can be addressed now by individual jurisdictions. I mean, the, the global tax deal that's on the table, the, you know, through the inclusive framework, does not prevent countries from imposing higher corporate taxes. It's a minimum global tax. It does not prevent uh, countries from uh, addressing the risk that you describe of uh, incorporating uh, yourself in order to avoid higher progressive uh, personal income taxes. I mean, these are all things that individual jurisdictions can address for themselves, subject to their de democratic processes. The reason why there's a need for an international agreement to address what we're seeking to address is because of the capacity for big multinational businesses to shift their affairs and to structure their affairs mm. such to essentially pick the jurisdiction that gives them the best deal. And then in the mm. sort of whole process also, I guess, provide, you know, press, put pressure on some countries to offer deals that, quite frankly, are tax wise mm. uh, So, I mean, I, I don't think that the right. deal that is on the table of, would prevent individual countries from doing what you're suggesting, yes. if that is what they choose. R respectfully, I disagree with that, because if there's no limit to tax competition, it's very hard for individual countries to increase their corporate income tax rate if firms mm -hmm. can move their factories, can move their headquarters, can move their employment to low tax countries where they will still be subject to tax rates below 15%. So I'm sorry, but this agreement doesn't help countries to increase their corporate income tax rate, unfortunately. Well, substantive activity is not shifted. As no, is. but that's the, that's the same problem, and it's even worse. You know, shifting paper profits across countries, you know, pure profit shifting, I agree with you, is going to be very substantially reduced thanks to Pillar 2. And I started my remarks by saying that it's a you know, very important 
progress and it's worth celebrating progress when it happens. So pure sh profit shifting, booking billions of dollars in profits in uh, uh, territories where there is no activity, this will come to an end. Those profits will be taxed at at least 15%. Uh, and that's, you know, that's a very good development. Um, however, what is not going to change, what, what's not going to change is that there will remain incentives for firms to move not their paper profits, but their factories, their workers, their headquarters, their real activity to very yeah. low tax countries, including zero tax countries. It's going to be and difficult. That's, that's, that's an even bigger problem. That's an even bigger problem.